We're going to learn how to implement XLIF translation files that you use to localize the entire interface. It's simple, you just replace the text found in the interface by reference to an external file containing the desired text. This will be in the form XLIF and an object name, for example, BOK, which is the reference of the OK button. We see here that the text has changed from finished to OK. Why is that? Because in the resources subfolder of the database folder, there's a folder for each language. Currently, the system is in English, and within this folder, we have an XML file that contains, in addition to the standard declarations in the body, a certain number of groups. Groups are not mandatory, but are useful for structuring the XLIF file, and in each group, translation units. It turns out that we have a resource called BOK, where the text contained in the target is OK. If we change this to finish and we save the file and go back to 4D, the text finish is replaced. We can test this here. And save, go back to 4D, and we can see end. For all the text of the interface, we need to replace the English text by the text in the desired language. Currently, we're in the en.xlf file, so all the target text names are in English. Let's create an entry for the text called add. The file was saved. Here, if we replace the text with xlif b add, we retrieve the text add. That's for the English version. Now we're going to retrieve this entry, close the file, and open this file in the French folder. We add the unit in question, ajouter, and save. Now imagine we want to work on a French system. In the system preferences, whether on Mac or Windows, we can set a priority language. Here, we see a notice that the changes will take effect the next time the application is launched. So we're going to quit our test database and start it again. and we can see that the text add has been replaced by the French version ajouté. If we want, we can change and indicate un enregistrement. We can then save. Note that the update is not automatic in the displayed form because the resources are loaded when the form is loaded. However, if we exit and go back to the structure, the form is updated with a new text. Now we just need to create the other entries. Tout sélectionné, tous les enregistrements, for example. And here we indicate that the button is a reference, xlift be all, and that we do in fact have the text tout sélectionné, tous les enregistrements. Now we're going to go back to the English system, so we need to quit 4D. When we restart, we find the text from earlier. However, in the English file, we did not indicate the translation of the be all entry, so in this case, the xlif reference is shown. So, we need to go back and retrieve the xlif file concern, and add the be all entry, and indicate all.
When we go back to 4D, the update is performed. An important complementary element in implementing XLIF files concerns the character strings and methods. Let's go back to the test variables form that we created and where we assign values to the pop-up menu that has three texts here. We can replace those three texts using the get localized string command and indicate a res name that matches in the XLIF file in question a label in the chosen language. Here we see the text one test text that is hello in English and bonjour in French. We're going to declare the array, trace the assigning of values, the array is actually empty, and when we read the matching strings, the array is filled with the contents of the XLIF file data. 